Hey YouTubers, it is Kat here and oh, a little spider just came down from the ivy. Notice how calm I was. <laughs> I used to be afraid of spiders. Uh, but anyways, you got to challenge your fears and I've gotten over that. So anyways, um, <laughs> it's day two healing from the lip blush. And as you can see, the color right now has stayed. It will be normal to fade tomorrow, the next day and start to come off before it comes back. I am saturating it with Hustle Butter, which is a tattoo ointment, and that was given to me um, by my artist, and I've also used it for other tattoos in the past where you heal from, and it is completely healthy and food product. It's fine to go on your lips, and so I saturated my lips in it, and I'm supposed to do that every 30 minutes um, during the day, and I'm also supposed to stay out of the sun as much as possible. You don't want direct sun on your lips when you're healing. So these are the pre-care pre lip blush guidelines for anyone who may be interested in getting it done. It's the pro procedure instructions. And this was given to me from the makeup artist um, at Sonoma Valley Brow. And actually, I think it's just called Valley Brow in Sonoma. And the artist I had there, her name is Art Erica. If anybody wants to call and you're in the San Francisco Bay Area or want to come from far to get awesome lips done, her name is Erica. So the pro procedure instructions are as follows. You're not going to want to work out 24 hours before the procedure. And you do not want to drink alcohol 24 hours before the procedure. No caffeine the day of the procedure. However, side note, I had a morning procedure and it got out by the afternoon, by, so from 9.15, 9.30 until about 1.15, 1.30, and I asked when I was done if I could have a cup of coffee, and she said it was fine. So it might just be no caffeine the day of the procedure until you've had the procedure, but ask your own makeup, permanent makeup, semi-permanent makeup artist, of course. Um, for people who suntan, you want to avoid tanning one week before the procedure. For people who do Botox, two weeks before the procedure and two weeks after the procedure is the timeline. So if you do do Botox, make sure you don't have it within two weeks of the procedure. And after you've had the procedure, you can start Botox again two weeks after the procedure. Uh, it says... For people who do fillers, six weeks before the procedure, you need to have stopped your lip fillers. And I don't know if it matters if you've had other facial fillers too, um, but it just talks about fillers and I'm assuming it's for lips, but please ask your own makeup artist. And six weeks after the procedure, you can start fillers again. Little side note though for that is that six weeks after the procedure, you're most likely going to have a touch up. Most people need to get a touch up because it'll be a little blotchy in some areas and they go back and make sure um, whatever areas of your lip did not fully take the saturation of the ink, they will go over and fill. And then you can also have another pass or two of the color and you can have a different color or correct the color if you don't like it and you can correct the lining of your lips. So. Most likely, it would be 12 weeks after the initial procedure if you're planning on having a touch-up where you could do the lip fillers again for people who do them. It says, do not take aspirin, ibuprofen, vitamin E, fish oil, niacin 24 hours before the procedure. Um, and for people who are on Retin-A or Retinol, for 60 days prior to the appointment, you need to avoid using and around, uh, it says, or around lip 30 days after the procedure. So I guess it must be in makeup or creams, I'm imagining. I don't know if people take it as a pill, but the instructions are off Retin-A or Retinol for 60 days before the appointment and avoid using on or around lip 30 days after the procedure. And it's said in the instructions because it could affect the pigment color fading. Um, off Occupy for one year, whoever's on Accutane. Any people who have a history of cold sores, you need to take a cold sore antiviral medicine at least one week before the procedure. And to prepare your lips, you do a sugar scrub two to three days before the procedure. And I have another video on my playlist of and on my individual videos 
of sugar scrub and how to make it for this procedure. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and if there was an added thing, anybody else who has any other medical conditions, talk to your doctor just to make sure that it is okay and healthy for you to have. Okay, everyone, I hope this answers any questions. If you have any more questions about the procedure, I'm so open. I'm wanting to share and teach and educate people about it um, from my own personal experience. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section if you want, or you can write me at cats7, the number seven corners, at gmail.com. However, if you want the best quick response time, it's gonna be in the comment section below. Take care and God bless.